okay, I guess when I'm when I follow my authentic interests and passions and put them out there, other people respond to that because it's better to show people what you're passionate about than to show people what you think is acceptable to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it is it's this hard road sometimes because people don't understand how vulnerable it is to post something that you've made sometimes. Yes. Hi, welcome to a new episode of Catching Up with That Jimmy, where I interview my friends and then take beautiful portraits of them. Today, I have my good friend Jaren Hess with me. Hi, Jaren. Hello. Um, tell us a little about yourself. All right. Hello, my name is Jaren Hess. Uh, I am a student at Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. Um, yeah, I'm studying illustration basically, but I want to get into the entertainment art industry. Um, something, something with animation probably. But uh, yeah, I uh, didn't always live in California. I grew up in rural Pennsylvania, and I moved here about five years ago. I'm kind of starting my life over here. That's that's great. Um, one thing that I find really fascinating about you is your um, upbringing and your probably tired of talking about it at this point but um i do want the viewers to know a little bit of a little bit about your background um and i know that you were raised as a german baptist a lot of people probably don't know what german baptists are and probably think that it's it's just baptist but german (laughs) but um in my understanding it's very different um, from what people might think. So can you tell us a little bit of, about that, please? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so I, the German Baptists are kind of a subset of, of the uh, Anabaptist um, umbrella, I guess. You, you have your Amish and Mennonites, and people generally recognize um, who the Amish are, like they've heard of the Amish. Um, but nobody's heard of the German Baptists because they're kind of like underground more and just kind of keep to themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, like we didn't we didn't drive horses and buggies or anything like that. We had a minivan and we had electricity, but intellectually we did keep ourselves very separate from the world and society. Like we didn't have any friends who weren't also German Baptists, and it was a little bit cult-like. Um, and I grew up on this big farm, and my uncles uh, each had their own section of the farm. And, so it was like this little mini neighborhood, and my entire social life was wrapped up in uh, German Baptist schooling, German Baptist church services, and just like all of my friends were German Baptists. So it was very closed off and separate from the world. Um, but at the same time, I was also always very curious about the outside world. And I like I would go to Kmart and I would go to the electronic section and see whatever like Pixar movie had just come out and. Um, I was just very fascinated with that and I started drawing when I was really young and um, I also knew that I was gay when I was really young so I kind of never fit in and uh, I gradually realized that I had to kind of get out of that and and leave because there was no way for me to fit into the architecture there you know they just don't talk about anything um, sexual or uh, alternative they just are very simplistic and puritanical and um, yeah, so very similar to the Amish or really conservative Mennonites. So that was a struggle, but uh, I made it out here. I'm I'm in California now, and life is a lot better. That's 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 an incredible story. I I'm really um, it's it's very inspiring to hear um, how you you know just decided to come out all by yourself um, into the world, into the city, and then um, you know to see what's out there for you and chase your own dream, you know? So that's very inspiring for me. And, um, and what I, from what I've known, um, over the years of your story, um, from my perspective, you've been an incredible, um, artist. I've seen your work here and there on Instagram and, um, you, you initially started at a community, community college in Pasadena and then you, um, transferred to Art Center and Design in Pasadena, which is a very prestigious art school. So I, like every time I think about that, I get really inspired because I 
most people don't know, I actually went to Pasadena, PCC, Pasadena City College for like a year as well, just to, you know, take some classes. And um, at the time I was thinking about, you know, pursuing further my art, but, um, and I did think about Art Center and it was kind of out of reach for me, tuition wise. And also just, you know, I didn't think that I, I don't, I wasn't that confident at the time with my art. Um, and um, so, so I knew how hard it is to get into Art Center, you know, and it's, and I'm just really glad that you are where you are right now today. So, um, kudos to you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Art Center is way too expensive. Um, but you know, they do have a lot of connections and I felt like I, I like as someone who never was allowed to consider college, um, it became really important to me, I guess, to, uh, pursue a degree because not, no one in my family has gone to college and no one believes in college at all. Like my parents are, have actively tried to convince me not to go and um i just feel like there's a lot missing in my my like my social cultural and like factual in, uh, education and um i just feel like getting a degree would be important for me but i don't recommend going into debt for for art school if you can help it um so uh, I am always impressed by you because you're very entrepreneurial thank and you. your photos are beautiful and you're thank making you, them work. You. And if I could do that, I would I would have not gone to Art Center. But Art Center is where I'm at now and it's been good for me. I just, I uh, wanna, it's uh, it's been very hard also. Mm -hmm. Paying for it is, is hard because right. it's, it's very scary to go into debt and, yeah. um, but you know, I, it's, it's also fun. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, there's many paths through this life. <laughs> yes, exactly. <clears throat> And, um, and one of my most recent favorite um, work of yours is your um, candles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'll, I'll put up a link below um, for you guys to see, but um, they're basically um, candles that are uh, male body form. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of them are like, um, like bear type, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like thicker man. Thicker big, man, big yeah. Man. Like you yeah. see a lot of, you see a lot of um, can body candles like available on Etsy, but they're usually really small. They're usually yeah. very stereotypically yeah. Um, like men with abs or whatever. Um, and I just wanted to make something that was conveyed a kind of um, strength and peace and serenity. And anyway, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it was a really fun project and I really want to do more of those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, also a little bit of a body positivity thing. Yes. Um, you, don't, you don't often see, I guess, well, I don't know, I guess it, it depends on where you look. But um, yeah, that was a really fun project and I'm glad you liked it. Yes, so. um, I, I plan to get myself a few. <laughs> um, but it is, you know, um, it is a very far departure from your upbringing for sure so has any of your family seen it or um i want i i am curious what made you what led you to um make these art because they're quite bold you know because for me um i i also like male body form i like all kinds of body forms because i think even female body forms i think like bodies are just beautiful you know yeah but um but i have you know i like male body forms a little bit more <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um um, so, so I, it, it took a lot of courage for me to actually shoot, um, like male nudes. I've never shot like complete nudes, but like, mm. you know, half nudes or whatever. Yeah. And like deciding to post it on my Instagram. Like those are actually like in the beginning, I was struggling with that because, you know, I yeah. was still dealing with a lot of shame inside, you know, mm. I wasn't sure what other people were going to think because yeah. a lot of people from my, not a lot, but some people from my childhood still follow me on Instagram. And I used to live in Oklahoma for my, um, for my college years. And so I have a lot of uh, conservative friends on my Instagram too. So I, I always thought, oh, <laughs> what are they going to think, you know? And so I, I dealt with a lot of shame in the past. And so it wasn't until um, a couple of my friends had pointed out to me that it sounds like you're dealing with shame, <laughs> you know, and at the time I wasn't going through therapy or anything, but my friends were. And so they, 
having gone through what they have gone through can pinpoint exactly what I was going through. So then I knew, okay, that's what I'm dealing with. Um, and then I slowly started to felt more comfortable um, shooting male nudes and um, posting, posting it. Yeah. Just you know, feel more comfortable with it myself too. And so I'm curious, like, how did you um, get to that point? Hmm. Yeah. Um... I guess it was a gradual thing. Like a lot of, like my family, for example, they are not allowed to use the internet. Um, so I actually came out on Facebook before I came out to my family in real life, uh, which is the reverse of how it usually is. But um, I do, I do know that there are some people from my past that follow me still, and I do think about that. Um, I, I am still kind of reining it in a little bit, like. It is. It does feel really vulnerable to create art um, that is tied to something so personal as your attractions and your sex life, and uh, putting that out there feels like revealing a part of your soul, and it can be like embarrassing, and there is a lot of shame there for sure. Uh, it's just something like I have. I've struggled with shame my whole life, and I'm kind of used to fighting back against it, and. Um, I don't know. I just I found so much joy in making the, that candle and like the form of it and uh, just like playing with wax and it was just a very fun physical hands-on thing and I loved it so much. I loved how it turned out and it was a, a work of beauty and I it was kind of a no-brainer. I had to share it and um, yeah, I think there are other things that I've made that I, I won't share yet. Um, but that one was kind of safe and uh, it, I just felt really proud of it. So gradually trying to work against shame by creating things that I'm proud of and sharing them. And, and you know, it's been very rewarding to see other people respond to that and people bought candles from me and uh, it was just like a school project that kind of became a, a source of income and then um, yeah, it was it was really interesting to see that happen and made me think. Okay, I guess when I'm when I follow my authentic interests and passions and put them out there, other people respond to that because it's better to show people what you're passionate about than to show people what you think is acceptable to them. Um, but yeah, it is it's a hard road sometimes because people don't understand how vulnerable it is to post something that you've made sometimes. Yes. I, I totally agree and um, making art um, making art for yourself and making art for the general public is I don't know where I'm going with this but I feel like they're two separate things um, and sometimes I struggle to pick like which one is more important you know because I feel like for the longest time um, I I feel like I, I shoot photographs um, to please people. You know, I I I, I try to photograph um, things that aren't too controversial. You know, like I have only recently started to shoot like um, more male bodies, and so those are the things that I want to shoot. Um, but I, but they're not necessarily what most people like you know and so yeah. so I don't know I think it's an interesting line um, when it comes to who you want to please mm -hmm. you know when mm -hmm. it comes to your own art so um, someone said that a great art should be um, appreciated by the public mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you know yeah. um, but usually those are the ones um, the artists themselves don't really care for so I don't know do you agree or I'm, I'm, I'm curious about your opinion um, I mean I follow this artist Chris Lopez who um, he does photography and painting and like um, really cool graphic design but it all revolves around like hot older men kind of daddy bear types mm -hmm. and um, it's like very clear what type he is, but he's built like an international audience. He's just really, really good at what he does. And um, he's just, all of his art is very, I feel like it's all very personal to him. And um, 
he's but he's turned it into like this um, very recognizable brand of work. Uh, even though there's different types of, of work, it's all very, very much uh, recognizable as his personal taste. And I think that's a difficult path because, um, like, you have to be really good, I think, to uh, make other people appreciate what you appreciate. But also, with the internet, there's like, you can reach any audience and uh, it, you can, um, you know, I, I always think about how there's this line in a play, I forget, um, I forget what it's called, but basically it goes, I would rather be um, uh, nine people's favorite thing than a hundred people's ninth favorite thing. Um, so, okay. uh, I don't know, I think the most meaningful connections as an artist come from people who um, are really passionate about the same things as you yeah. and uh, can connect on a deep level with, with the things that you uh, also connect deeply with. But yeah, it is. there's also making a living. You gotta make a living, you gotta um, work for other people and uh, there's always a balance to be struck there. So I'm still in the, in the midst of figuring out what that is. So. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a process. Right, it is. So when you do, when you are going through hard times, whether it is, um, you know, having, having a creative, um, creative, what's the word, um, create, creator's block, mm -hmm. or, um, or, you know, s struggling financially, how do you overcome these times? Because a lot of people go through these times. I, you know, like I feel like it would be helpful to share your experience if other people are going through similar things. You know? Yeah. Um, well, it's always good to uh, talk to trusted friends and kind of process things. Like I feel like the school term just started, and I'm getting a lot of stuff thrown at me, and I'm processing a lot of new info, and I, I can feel like my mental health declining because I don't have time to journal or work out as much and I just need to start managing my time better because I, it, it's become like over the summer it's become very important to me to work out regularly like it's a great anxiety buster mm. um, and it, you know it feels good and it's good for you mm. and I just feel so much better although yeah it is it's so hard to build these routines into your life when things are being are disrupting you and uh it's uh yeah i think the biggest thing that i need to do to take care of myself is to um be easier on myself and give myself grace and yeah, yeah. realize that i'm doing the best that i can and uh i'm not failing i'm just uh, processing new info and i'm doing the best i can with the knowledge and tools that i have and um i can't be perfect even though i want to be and uh it's just letting go of so much of the pressure is important. Um, but you know, I also recommend therapy and take antidepressants if you need to um, get help. Uh, don't try to go it alone. I know, so, like for me, I've it's hard for me to ask for help and it's hard for me to rely on other people because I learned really early on I can't rely on my own family. And if my own family can't support me and help me and get uh, you know be the kind of family that I need, then who else is going to be but there's always somebody in your life who will, will show up and help you out and uh, it's just important to try to be grateful for what you have and focus on the people that are there for you instead of dwelling on the difficulty and the problems that you have because I'm always wanting to try to solve my problems and focus on that but it's it's more important I think to focus on uh, what you do have and what you can be grateful for uh, it's just a struggle yeah. Um, but yeah exercise eat, eat the right eat the right food <laughs> yes, yes. that's something I struggle with a lot too yeah. um, and I can I can tell that it has a huge impact on my mental health and, and when I'm going through hard times yeah. Um, but yeah that does that help yeah that, that helps a lot <laughs> and um, several of the things that you mentioned um, work on me too um, working out for sure um, like it's usually hardest before you work out but after you work out it's um, it's it's such a rewarding experience yeah. um, 
be kind to yourself is one of the thing, one of the top、um, for me on my list.、Um, and I learned that only recently too, because、um, I I'm always very hard on myself. I I grew up in an authoritarian country, so I was.、Um, Taught to be certain ways, and I was wired and conditioned to、um, listen to other the authorities, you know. And I, if I don't have an authority around me, I make up this invisible authority in my head and just, you know, follow that invisible author authority in directions, you know. And whenever, and then I have this reward and shame system in my head, right? And so, right, yeah. So、um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but、um, I guess what I was trying to say is that be kind to yourself is very very important, and also、um, and also another、um, simple, very simple thing that I found to be very very helpful is to just take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. In in my past,、um, I always frown upon.、Um, People who sleep a lot or people who nap because、um, my dad does it a lot, <laughs> and, and you know again it's the authoritarian thing. You know, like my mom was conditioned to to think that people who sleep or people who nap are lazy, and so she always、um, like give my heart my dad a really hard time whenever he naps. But my dad is an artist, so. Now that I've gone through what I've gone through as a creative, I know how important like taking breaks, taking rests, and taking naps,、um, and just sleep, getting your, getting enough sleep. How how important these things are, you know. And so、um, now I don't have shame on that anymore. So whenever I want to change how I think, just change my state of emotions. My my state of mind. I just take a quick nap and then meditate before and after afterwards, or even just you know sometimes I nap because I meditate. You know,、right. sometimes、yeah. I meditate on my bed and then I just fall asleep、yeah. and then I wake up feeling a little better, a little different. You know, and so that's another thing that's that、really、I would、good. say. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you do it? <laughs>、um, I am so bad at meditation.、Yeah. I know you're not supposed to say that because、yeah. it's just like a practice, and、right. there's no wrong way to do it. But、yeah. um, it's just I've wanted to have, do it regularly for years, and I just something always blocks me. But、yeah. naps,、um, I, I'm a good napper.、Yeah. I'll, I'll nap all the time.、Um, yeah. I've gotten into the habit of just like having an afternoon nap whenever I can.、Um, but yeah, I don't know. I would love to meditate more. I have started to combine like meditation and the gym and like、uh, stream of consciousness sketchbook practice.、Yeah. Um, like I'll take, I have a little notebook that I take to the gym with me. I don't take my phone in at all because that's distracting.、Um, and like in between sets, I'll just rest and、uh, maybe doodle a little bit. And some really amazing little pieces of art have come out of that.、Um, it's just like my personal time to. Let my brain wander, and also get the, like the the、um, benefits of working out, and kind of mix it all together. And having something to do, and like that kind of,、uh, it, it's not as intimidating as saying, "Okay, I'm going to sit down and meditate for 15 minutes without falling asleep."、Um, but yeah, everybody needs to be more mindful and focus on that kind of.、Um, Inner work. I think there's a lot of a lot of distraction today, and it's、yes. like a plague on society. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. social media is is、uh, ruining us.、Um, but yeah, we, we get it. Yes,、um, beautifully said. And I was wondering if you have any daily affirmations that you tell yourself.、Um, the main one I hang on to is everything always turns out better than I expect, because <laughs> that's been proven to me time and time again. I always.、Um, Tend to catastrophize things and、um, look out for problems,、um, and the result of that is that I'm always I'm like I'm finding problems that don't don't exist yet or never will, and or I'm expecting the worst when it just it, it's interesting because time and again things turn out better than I think they will,、um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've experimented with a lot of different affirmations. I think the last one that I tried to really commit to my mind was,、um, I am going to be meeting a lot of people that will enrich my life in, in a lot of different ways. I I 
feel like the loss of community a lot um, since moving out here. You know, LA is a little different than Pennsylvania, and I grew up in, I didn't grow up in the 90s, I grew up in the 1500s basically. And so my family was so backwards and anti technology, anti entertainment, anti society, anti politics. Um, adjusting to like modern life has been interesting, and I just, I'm, there's never, I'm never, I don't think I'll ever find the kind of community that I grew up in where I can actually be myself in a healthy way. Um, but I really want to uh, meet people that enrich my life, that I admire, and um, that, uh, you know, that kind of invest in me, I guess, because I feel like I was taught to um, really. Uh, not have any of that and just be um, be a kind of servant and a cog and a, um, a nobody who has no ambition and uh, I don't know it's uh, I don't know it's fun to do uh, interviews like this uh, which I, I don't do often obviously but uh, I just wanted to thank you for having me be a part of this because thank this you. this is kind of an enriching thing that you're doing and I, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And I sure. hope you guys aren't hearing the loud <laughs> <laughs> car. Um, but yes, that, that's really beautiful. And I think that's something that everybody can relate to as well. You know, that things always turn out better than you expect it you know like we all have this worry in our head and just in the end it turns out those worries are just waste of energy right and if we had used that energy instead to just appreciate the present moment and just enjoying the process like life is just that much more rich richer yes. you know and yeah. so so thank you so much for um being here today, I definitely feel like I learned so much more about you, and I think that um, what you do is amazing, and I have such hope for for you. And I think that you know you'll you'll create you'll continue creating more and more beautiful arts and bringing value to the world. And I really hope that you guys check out Jaren's work on Instagram and also um, his is it Etsy shop. Or, uh, yeah, I do have an Etsy. It's yes. linked on my Instagram. Yes, and check out his amazing <laughs> candles and <laughs> and get yourself some, <laughs> you know. And so um, that's our time for the day. And for my Patreon subscribers, please check out our extended interview where we talk about gay sex. <laughs> <laughs> so thank good. you, interview. I, I mean, <laughs> thank you, Jared. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for watching.